If you're tired of burning up belts on your UTV, I'm gonna show how you can help prevent that issue by installing a Razorback 3.1 belt temp gauge on your machine. Keeping your belt under 210 degrees is critical for a long wear life. If you get much above that, then you can shred a belt really quick. So that's where this Razorback 3.1 belt temp gauge comes into play. It's gonna let you know if you're in the safe zone or in the danger zone, and it's gonna progressively tell you where you're at. So it starts with a green LED in the top, and then above 200 degrees, that's gonna turn yellow. 225, it turns red. 245, you're gonna be flashing red. And 260, hopefully you never get there, but it's gonna be a strobing red. So if you do get anywhere past that 200 degree range, what you wanna do is just take it easy on the belt, cruise on a level surface. If you're rock crawling, you may need to slightly rev the engine in neutral for a minute to do that. And that's gonna help cool that belt down. If you just stop, then it's gonna damage the belt. So. Make sure you cool it down properly. Now, one more thing with this is these are IP65 rated and the connectors are IP67 rated. And all that means is these are super durable and you don't need to worry about these being out in the elements. Now, as far as the install process goes, this is a universal gauge. It's gonna work for any side-by-side -side, and the install process is gonna be similar for all those side-by-sides, but there's gonna be a few minor differences with that and we'll talk about those as we go and we're going to show you how to do this on a 2021 Can-Am Maverick X3 Max. To do this job you're going to need some common hand tools so we have sockets and torque bits you may need some allen keys we have our clutch cover removal tool you need a belt removal tool and then we also need wire strippers digital multimeter we have a half inch drill bit and drill a heat gun, we've got safety glasses and some blue Loctite. Now throughout the process, you wanna to refer to your model specific service manual and the instructions that come with your kit for more information and specs. For parts, we have our Razorback 3.1 belt temp gauge that comes with the gauge itself, your rocker switch, a temperature sensor, and all the necessary wiring to get it installed. Now it also comes with some electrical connectors and you're gonna need a way to get that gauge mounted up. So separately, you can buy a gauge mount. So Razorback, they're making these gauge mounts for the Can-Am Maverick X3s. But if you have a Polaris, you might have to get something else. This is an automotive style gauge mount with a two and one sixteenth inch hole. Or you can use a hole saw if you wanna mount this into your dash. So it's completely up to you on what you wanna do. The first thing we need to do is gain access to our belt. So we're gonna remove our belt cover. Now we did remove our shock. Typically that's not necessary, but we're just trying to better show the process. The next thing we need to do is mount up our belt temp sensor. So the main thing with this is it needs to be perpendicular to the belt and centered on it right here. So if we look at the center of our belt, we're just gonna go straight up. We have room in the cover right there. That's gonna be a great location for us, but every machine is gonna be different. So anywhere you have room across the top of this cover or the Polaris's, you know, sometimes the outer belt cover comes and wrap around, wraps around the backside of that belt. And you might have to drill in the three or four o'clock position on that or some of the 2020 and newer ones have you drill in at the one o'clock position. So really depends what machine you're working on. But again, we're gonna go straight up from the belt on top. So we're gonna mark our mounting location for the sensor using a Sharpie. Then we're just gonna remove this belt so we don't damage it. Now, if you're not sure how to remove your belt on your machine, we've got a lot of different videos for a lot of different machines. So check those out. And when you remove the belt, pay attention to the direction of rotation. You wanna install it in the same way. Once you have your position marked, you can use an auto centering punch and make a little dimple and drill a pilot hole. After that, we're gonna drill all the way through with the half inch drill bit. And once you've drilled all the way through, you wanna make sure you clean any plastic shavings from the clutch housing. Next thing we're gonna do is apply blue Loctite to our sensor and we can slide this down through the top and then you're gonna adjust it 
you're going to adjust that top nut so that when you install the bottom nut, only about three threads are sticking out once everything's tightened down. Once you have the sensor mounted up, you can go ahead and reinstall your belt. The next thing we need to do is find a mounting location for our gauge. So the easiest way to do that is if they make a bracket for your machine, just get one of those and this is gonna look clean. But if you don't have that option for your machine, what you're gonna do, you can get an automotive style gauge mount or make your own and you can just bolt this right up to the dash. Or if you have room in your dash, you can use a two and one sixteenth inch hole saw and mount the gauge directly to the dash. But clearly we don't have any room on our dash. So again, we're just going with the bracket that they sell for this. So to get our mount installed, we're just gonna remove these two screws and we'll install the bracket and use the two replacement screws it comes with. Then we're gonna slide the gauge into place and I'm probably gonna pull this back off when we're doing our wiring, but at least we know where to run the wires. The next thing we're gonna do is find a mounting location for our rocker switch. We're just gonna remove one of the plugs from our dash and insert this into there. But if you don't have one of these plugs, then you can just cut out your dash and just make sure you have a snug fit for this so it clips into place. Now, we're not gonna install this yet. We're gonna wait until we have all the wires ran. So we're gonna go ahead and start with wiring. Now to get everything wired up, what we're gonna do, we need to gain access to our battery and our stock wiring harness. So for us, we're just gonna remove both passenger seats and the center console panels. So at this point, we need to route our harnesses. You've got two different harnesses. This all black one is the belt sensor harness, and we're just gonna run this from that sensor in the back all the way to the gauge in the front. We're just gonna follow the stock wiring harness and you just wanna avoid any rotating parts or sharp edges and any hot things that are hot like the exhaust. So that's it for the belt sensor harness. Then we have the power harness. So you've got four different ends on this. So one of these hooks up to your gauge and then this black wire, this is gonna to connect to your battery power. The gray one is gonna to connect to your rocker switch. And the blue one, this is optional. If you wanted to run a belt cooling fan, you have the option to do that, but we're not gonna be doing that today. One more thing with this belt sensor harness, if you have a ton of extra cord and you're all the way to the front of the gauge, you can wrap up any cord like this and just hide it under these panels. Now at the back of the machine, we can finish routing the temp sensor harness. Again, we're avoiding anything that could possibly damage it. All right, from here we have our gauge wire and the rocker switch wire routed up to those. And now we need to hook up our key on power. So on the Polaris, you have this bus bar in the front for the Can-Ams, it's in the side of the console right here. If your machine doesn't come with a power distribution bar like ours, you'll wanna use your meter or a test light to check for key on power. If you already have a 12 volt accessory plug, you might be able to tie into that, or you can use your wiring diagram in the service manual to help find a wire to tie into. We just verified with our meter that we have key on power right here and our ground right there. So what I went ahead and did, I cut the power wire to length. You don't have to do this. You can just roll up any extra length if you have it, but we're gonna install the eyelets onto both of these connectors. From here we can connect our switch and our gauge. So I'm gonna install these connectors onto these leads that go to our switch. At this point we can make our connections at the switch. Now these connectors are not polarity sensitive, so it doesn't matter which wire goes where. After that we can heat up that heat shrink and then install our switch.
Now we're going to take the ring for the back of the gauge. We're going to put it through the harnesses and then put both harnesses through the mount. And then we're going to install both harnesses onto our gauge. Now keep in mind that these have a little spline they need to line up with when you install them. After that, we can install the gauge and tighten down the lock ring. Now we're gonna turn the key on and make sure that we have power to our gauge. If that's all good, we're gonna go through and tie down the wiring harness all the way to the back. So our gauge is working. You can toggle through the different settings and you can choose either Fahrenheit or Celsius. Once you have everything tied down, you can go ahead and reinstall your clutch cover and any other remaining body panels and seats that you removed. That's all there is to installing the Razorback 3.1 belt temp gauge on your side-by-side. -side. This is gonna help you get the most life out of your belt. So it's a really great product to have. If you need this or any other products for your side-by-side, -side, go to our website. We have a lot of different options on there. And for more helpful content, subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.